Welcome to Go Recaps. Today we are going to see recap of the 2003 sci-fi action and thriller movie titled Paycheck. Michael Jennings is a successful scientist and a reverse engineer. Michael's currently starting a project for a company called Nexum. He brings a 3D monitor to a secret facility where he meets Rita, a Nexum lawyer. She tells him she'll see him again in two months. Michael works tirelessly and alone for two months in a computer clean room. He disassembles, analyzes, and tests the 3D monitor to determine how it functions. His final deliverable for Nexum must be a better product to allow Nexum to outshine its competition. It's the big day where Michael reveals his project for a group from Nexum. He improved the display by getting rid of the monitor and having just a hologram. The small crowd leaves the room and only Rita and Michael remain. Rita congratulates Michael with a bottle of champagne. In two months, he's produced what they've been struggling with making for three years. Many of Michael's recent memories flash on the screen, then suddenly stop with the image of him two months ago walking into the building. Shorty, Michael's friend, is extracting his memory from the marker forward to the present. Several images of his memories are shown on the monitor and then deleted. His friend completes the deletion of the remaining memories. Michael appears to be slightly dizzy and Shorty suggests he takes it easy. Michael asks for his paycheck and Rita hands him an envelope with a check for $526,000. Michael and Shorty are in a fitness room, and Shorty is monitoring Michael's health and response time. Afterward, Michael lets Shorty know that he's not concerned with the memories that Shorty erases. He focuses on memories of the fun and exciting stuff, like vacations. Michael enters his apartment and watches TV. He reads an invitation to an event from Jimmy, the owner of Allcom. Michael also reads that the Red Sox lost. Michael and Shorty are at Jimmy's formal event, listening to violinists and other musicians play. Michael meets Dr. Rachel Porter. She's a biologist and works for Jimmy. Michael is blunt and asks Rachel to leave with him. She lets him know she prefers a normal conversation. Jimmy appears and greets Michael. We learn Jimmy is Michael's old friend from school. Jimmy asks Michael to consider a two to three year job that involves optics. Jimmy wouldn't disclose anymore, but said Michael would earn stock options of eight figures. Michael suggests that erasing someone's memory of the past two to three years can't be done. Michael decides to do the job and arrives by helicopter to a large Allcom complex and meets with John Wolfe. Michael will be assigned a room and won't be able to leave their campus. Michael is required to put all of his personal items in an envelope that he can retrieve when he picks up his paycheck at the end of the project. Michael and John meet Jimmy. Michael is given an injection that will serve as a marker. His memory will be wiped up to the second injection that he'll get when the job is completed. While Jimmy briefly attends to business, Michael checks the facility and meets Rachel again. Jimmy returns and lets Rachel know Jimmy will be joining the team. Jimmy leads Michael into a different room and introduces him to the other half of his team, Dr. William Decker. John is putting the isotope gun back in its case, and Michael is sitting across from Jimmy and wants to know what happened. The project was a success, and three years have passed. Michael walks into his home after his long absence. Michael looks online from his home computer and sees his balance went from $50,000 to $92,000. Michael goes to Reedy Grant, signs a document, and is given an envelope. The items are not his and he's confused. He apparently mailed the envelope to them four weeks ago and is shown his signature on the form. Michael doesn't remember but just wants to sell some shares and get some money. He's told he forfeited his shares four weeks ago and is shown his signature on the document. Michael grows impatient and angry and leaves. Michael goes home and calls Jimmy, but Jimmy is out of the office and won't return until the afternoon. Michael notices the front door is open, walks to it, and closes it. He then notices two hallway doors are open. At that moment, two men attack and subdue him. Then, three more men open the front door, and one tasers Michael. The FBI agents take him to their facility. Michael is interrogated regarding what technology he was working on for Jimmy. Michael denies knowing anything. The agents threaten Michael and accuse him of treason. 
They want to know why recent patent applications have Michael's signature on them. Apparently, Decker can't be questioned because he's dead after falling from a 14-story balcony. The agents strap Michael to the chair and attempt to extract memories from him, but only find unimportant fragments of his memories and stop. One of the agents gets a cigarette from the pack in Michael's envelope. The cigarette smoke activates the fire suppression system. The hallway door automatically opens and the straps securing Michael release. Michael moves to the envelope and grabs his glasses, enabling him to see. Michael pushes an agent out of his way, departs the room, and runs through the building and outside. He runs on the sidewalk to a nearby stairwell. While running, Michael is seen by John from Allcom. John then sees agents running down the sidewalk. Michael runs into a bus station, he drops the envelope after being bumped, and while retrieving the items, he sees a bus ticket. He then boards a bus, before the agents see him, and he escapes the area. While riding the bus, Michael looks at the items in the envelope. A thief on the bus sees a ring Michael had taken from the envelope. He steals it, runs off the bus and down the sidewalk. Michael chases after the thief, but stops when he gets off the bus and realizes he's outside of Reedy Grant. Michael goes inside and wants to know who sent him the envelope four weeks ago. She shows Michael his signature on the shipping document. Jimmy goes to the machine that Michael and Dr. Decker built. It predicted the future to include when Michael would die. Jimmy gets an error message and is unable to use the machine. He tells John to find Michael. Michael finds refuge in a hotel room and empties the contents of the envelope on the bed. There's a slip of paper with a rhyme on one side and numbers on the opposite side. There's an access card for Allcom, a small can of hairspray, a butane lighter, and additional items that Michael doesn't think are his. Michael calls Shorty and arranges to meet him at Union Station at 9 o'clock. Michael handles a stuffed bird at the station and thinks of Rachel. He then notices a man wearing coveralls with Edison written on the back, taking a key out of a utility door. Michael grabs the key from his envelope with an Edison tag attached. Shorty arrives, and Michael shows him the contents of the envelope. Shorty thinks Michael should be asking himself why he gave up $90,000. Michael explained he was working with William Decker. Shorty thinks Decker was working on a classified laser project, and one day, the government shut him down. Apparently, the laser project was going to cost $500,000,000. One of the scientists tells Jimmy, in the Allcom lab, that the time machine Michael made can be fixed. Jimmy calls John and tells him they don't need Michael any longer. Shorty tells Michael he needs to talk with Decker. Michael says he can't, because Decker is dead after falling out of his 14-story bedroom window. Shorty gets scared and wants to leave. John's group of assassins from Allcom are positioned near Michael and Shorty and start shooting at them. One of John's group starts shooting at Shorty. Michael leaps on the shooter and incapacitates him. Michael runs down the stairs and onto a subway platform, and then through a door and into a maintenance tunnel. Michael is followed by two of John's men that have guns. Michael is now trapped in a subway train tunnel with John. They're several feet away from each other, both pointing their handguns at each other. Michael causes a distraction as he hears a train approaching and runs. John shoots but misses. Michael stops at an electrical junction box on the wall and uses the paperclip from the envelope to short-circuit the train's brakes. The train stops inches away from crushing Michael, and he escapes from the subway. After looking at the images extracted from Michael, it appears he knew what would happen. They talk about Dr. Decker's project and how he believed the technology would allow him to see the future. While Michael is washing, water drops on the matchbook from the envelope revealing the logo of a restaurant, Café Michel. He calls the restaurant and discovers he has a reservation for two people at one o'clock today. At the same time, Jimmy visits Rachel's apartment while she's feeding her beloved birds. Jimmy tells Rachel that yesterday, Michael finished his project and had his memories erased. He left all calm. Rachel is surprised and saddened. Michael promised her he wouldn't erase his memories. Jimmy and John monitor video of Rachel to find Michael. From her reaction while she's in her bathroom shower area, they think she got a message from Michael. Jimmy has a security agent accompany Rachel when she leaves her apartment. John searches Rachel's bathroom for clues, 
and discovers she's meeting Michael at 1 o'clock at Café Michel. Rachel enters her plant lab with a security agent. The security agent decides to remain below as Rachel rides a lift to a catwalk above. She leaves the Allcom facility after reaching the outside roof. Jimmy has Maya, a Rachel look-alike, go to Café Michel to meet Michael. John is prepared to shoot Michael from a vehicle across the street, but delays because police are nearby. Maya tells Michael he's supposed to give her something in his envelope. When Michael empties the contents, Jimmy tells Maya to tell Michael he's supposed to give her the Allcom access card. Maya leans over to tell Michael to wait for her, and Michael notices her colored contact lens move, disclosing her eye color is different than he remembers, Rachel's eye color. Michael grabs his envelope and his access card back from Maya's purse, and Michael and Rachel depart. John chases Michael and Rachel in his car. Michael and Rachel run around the corner and stop in a BMW dealership parking lot. Michael takes a BMW K Phoebe from his pocket and starts pressing it. Several of John's agents join the chase. Several FBI agents are in a helicopter and route to Michael as well. Michael and Rachel reach a dock area and the envelope falls to the ground. Michael turns around and Rachel gets off the motorcycle to get the envelope. John shoots and misses Rachel. Rachel gets back on the motorcycle and the chase continues. Police cars and the FBI helicopter arrive and John departs the area. The police cars chase Michael and Rachel, but they escape. Rachel enters the hotel room and sees Michael looking in her bag. She hands him some of his clothes she brought and realizes he doesn't remember her. She gives him photos and a video player to remind him of the time they were together, and she leaves the room. Michael looks at the photos and videos, and Rachel comes back. Michael apologizes. He doesn't remember. Michael and Rachel are talking when Michael suddenly remembers that when he was given the envelope, he was told there were 20 items, but he only counted 19. He uses the magnifying glass and realizes one of the stamps on the envelope is different. They go to the school across the road from the hotel and check the stamps using a microscope with great magnification. They see embedded in one of the eyes on the stamp are copies of newspapers from the future. The newspaper articles suggest that in the future, the U.S. government launches a preemptive strike on another country. Being able to predict the future leads to our destruction. Michael wants to destroy the machine. Stevens tells Jimmy and John he needs another day to find the bug in the system. The FBI agents are monitoring traffic cameras. One agent suggests Michael may plan to go back to Allcom, since he put an Allcom access card in the envelope. The Attorney General wants an FBI agent to tap the phone lines at Allcom. He also wants agents there to respond, because he wants the machine. Michael and Rachel walk through the crowd at an Allcom lobby. A security agent sees Michael and Rachel and calls John to tell him. John tells Jimmy, Michael and Rachel release the metal ball bearings from the envelope through the metal detectors to cause a diversion. They use the Allcom access card to breach two security doors. Jimmy knows Mikkel and Rachel are going to the lab and has the guards moved out of sight. Michael thinks they should close the door so it can't be opened. Mikkel uses the Allen wrench and a coin from the envelope to disable the door to the lab so it can't be open from the outside. Michael wants to use the machine to look at the future before he destroys the machine. He turns the machine on but gets an error message and assumes he put a bug in it so Jimmy couldn't use it. Rachel wants to know if he can fix it. There are only two remaining items in the envelope, a bullet and a crossword puzzle. Michael uses the clues on the crossword puzzle to locate the board and chip on it that must be removed. As soon as Michael removes the chip, Jimmy sees on his monitor that the machine is fixed and tells John to get Michael. John calls his agents and tells them where to get Michael. Jimmy gets a handgun from his desk and walks out. Michael and Rachel return to the machine and try to see the future. Many fragments of images appear, and then Michael is seen on a catwalk being shot. It's the same scene he's seen in his nightmares. Michael tells a scared-looking Rachel that he's already used the machine to change his future, and he can do it again. Michael and Rachel hear someone trying to open the lab door they disabled. Jimmy, John, and multiple security agents are wanting to get in the lab. Rachel wants to know how they're going to get out. 
Michael looks at the bullet, the last item from the envelope. As he looks around the lab, he notices some pistons near some liquid hydrogen tanks and attaches the bullet to one of the pistons. Jimmy John and the agent stand back after placing explosives on the lab door controller. After the explosion, the door opens and they all enter the lab. While looking for Michael and Rachel, John sees the large cover of a vent is open and tells his posse they escaped through the vent. Michael and Rachel fight with security agents they encounter in the hallways and are shot at while they move into a different lab. Jimmy tries to discover what Michael was doing with the machine he built. Two armed security agents enter the lab where Michael and Rachel are hiding. Michael exchanges fire with one as Rachel knocks another one to the floor. Additional security agents enter the lab, and the fighting and shooting continues. Jimmy sees the scene on the machine of Michael getting shot. Jimmy thinks Michael has a date with a catwalk. Michael and Rachel continue fighting the security agents until they're all subdued. Michael sees Jimmy entering the lab and signals to Rachel they must leave. He locks the glass door after Rachel's out and lets her know she must leave if she loves him. Michael and Jimmy fight in the lab. Jimmy wraps a cord around Michael's neck and hoists him to a catwalk, where he drops Michael. The area looks identical to where Michael was shot in his dreams and what the machine had shown him minutes before. Numerous FBI agents run through the alum facility toward the lab. Michael stands up on the catwalk and Rachel is led in with three security agents. At the same time, John is at the controls of the machine in the lab. An FBI agent prepares to shoot and retire Michael from behind, and Jimmy prepares to shoot him from the front. Michael gets a message on his watch to go. Michael and Rachel both jump off the catwalk, just as the FBI agent's bullet passes and continues killing Jimmy. John sees on the machine that he is near death and tries to escape an explosion and fire. But it is too late. The explosion and fire destroy the lab, but Michael and Rachel survive. Michael removes his watch and leaves it in the lab, then he and Rachel leave. As the agents search the lab, they realize the machine is destroyed. An FBI agent finds Michael's watch and smiles while pocketing it. The Attorney General wants to know if there's any sign of Michael, and the agent suggests they didn't leave alive. Michael and Rachel are working in a nursery business that Shorty started. Rachel wants to know what's in their future. Michael doesn't know, but he likes it that way. He never wants to forget anything ever again. Shorty arrives, carrying a cage with Michael and Rachel's birds in it. Rachel thanks Shorty and reminds Michael that he and her bought the birds together. Michael remembers a clue on the strip of paper from the envelope. If you only look where you can go, you will miss the riches below. He then finds a $90,000 lottery ticket hidden under the birdcage. 